The Bible is a book that really is a collection of books and writings from various authors of various backgrounds in various time periods. Now, throughout the Bible, you'll find similar stories and themes and even the exact same accounts recorded from different sources. Due to translation and copyist errors, there have been many contradictions or at least apparent contradictions in the Bible that have surfaced over the years. And this episode will highlight passages of the Bible that are considered to be contradictions. Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome back to FED Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton and I want you guys to watch this episode until the end and share your thoughts about these verses, whether or not you believe that they're contradictions. And actually, also want to know your thoughts and comments if you believe that these verses have clear explanations that actually clear up the contradiction or apparent contradiction within them. So let's start off this episode at number 10, the different genealogies of Jesus. So it was said that the Messiah had to be of the line of King David, and it's found in various Old Testament books of the Bible, like Jeremiah and Isaiah. So the two Gospels in the New Testament, they provide genealogies of Jesus to validate this requirement. Now, in the book of Matthew chapter 1, verses 16, that passage goes as follows. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, and Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Now, the other genealogy in the book of Luke chapter 3, verses 23, it goes backwards and it begins as follows. Jesus was a son, so it was thought of Joseph, the son of Heli. Now, the most common response to this is to say that the genealogy in Luke was for Mary, but that's not what the text says. It says that it's for Joseph. So was Joseph's father Jacob or Heli? Number nine is what did these women actually do at the tomb? So there are some women that discovered the empty tomb of Jesus and they returned to tell others. This is recorded in the book of Matthew 28 verses 8 and it says, The women hurried away from the tomb afraid yet filled with joy and ran to tell his disciples. Now this is also corroborated in the book of Luke 24 verse 9 that goes, When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and all the others. But Mark's account has a different outcome. It says, Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. And that's found in Mark 16 verses 8. That's actually how the original version of the Gospel of Mark ended that verse. But later on, an addition was made that extends the verse, and it made the verse fall more in line with the accounts of Matthew and Luke. So depending on the Bible, it may read a little bit differently. All right, moving on to number eight. No one can see God. Yeah, that's mentioned in 1 John 4 verses 12. No one has ever seen God. And also, 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 16 says, No man has seen or can see God. But did some people in the Old Testament, like Abraham and Moses, see God? There's a passage in Genesis 18 verse 1 that says, The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Also, a verse in Exodus chapter 33 verse 11 says, The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. So is this God literally appearing? Or did God take on a different form to appear? Yeah, there's many different arguments for this contradiction too. Number seven brings us ancestral punishment. Exodus 20 verses five says, I the Lord your God am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Now, another verse in the Bible found in Deuteronomy chapter 24 verse 16 says, Fathers shall not be put to death for their children, nor children put to death for their fathers. Each is to die for his own sin. <laughs> Looks like a contradiction right there. We move on to number six. Does God support lying? Proverbs 12 verses 22 says, Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. But the book of 1 Kings 22 verses 23 says, Therefore, look, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours, and the Lord has declared disaster against you. Halfway into number five, how old was he? So let's take a look. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 24 verses 8, we find a passage that reads, Jehoiakim was 
18 years old when he began to reign and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. Now, a parallel passage found in the book of 2 Chronicles 36 verse 9 says, Jehoiakim was eight years old when he began to reign and he reigned three months and 10 days in Jerusalem. So was he eight or 18? Moving on to number four, did the sun rise or was it still dark? Mark chapter 6 verses 2 says, And very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. Now the book of John 20 verses 1 says, The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, and see the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Okay, so we see rising of the sun, but we see in the morning while it was still dark. Rising of the sun offers a different picture than being still dark. So, contradiction or not? The contradiction at number three is how did Judas lose his life? This is a pretty popular one. In the account of Matthew chapter 27 verses 5, it says, And Judas cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed, and he went and hanged himself. So we all know what hanging is, but there's another account of this in the book of Acts chapter 1 verses 18 that says, Now Judas purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all of his bowels gushed out. There have been some arguments saying that these verses just fall on some different semantics and language uses. It's possible to be hung and also be split open. It just really depends on what part of the hanging you're referring to. But either way, regardless of what argument is used, it still hasn't been enough to clear this up fully as being a contradiction in certain people's minds. The contradiction number two is by twos or by sevens. This brings us to the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 6, verses 19. It says, And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shall you bring into the ark. Now, in the very next chapter, Genesis chapter 7, verse 2, it says, Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. So it does further explain that animals that are clean would go into the ark by sevens and the unclean ones would go into the ark by twos. But the argument made about this contradiction really is why in Genesis 6 would it say that every living thing of all flesh, rather than just simply saying that there would be some animals going in by two. Why use the term all? Now we end off with number one, the children of Michal. Therefore, Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no children unto the day of her death. And that's found in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 6, verses 23. Now in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 21, verses 8, so a little bit later on in the book, it says, But the king took the two sons of Rizpah, and the five sons of Michal, the daughter of Saul. So we see the same Michal. One says that she has no sons. The other one says that she has five sons. Were these five adopted sons, maybe? Still an apparent contradiction in the eyes of many people. So there you have it, guys. This was a look at 10 surprising contradictions in the Bible. These are some of the biggest ones. And as always, I want to hear your thoughts and comments about this down below. Do you have any further explanations of these contradictions or do you agree that they are straight up contradictions? If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like and until next time guys, stay awesome, stay educated, and I'll see you in the next episode.